intense chill blasts. Few people can have fully escaped the ill effects of the storms, the cost in terms of damage and loss Harbour officials say it's one of the worst storms in living memory. On Humberside, winds gusting at more than 90 miles an hour brought chaos to the east coast. Further evidence tonight of the severity of today's storms. More than 7,000 sheets of glass were shattered at Humber Growers and Mountain. When we get disastrous weather, some people say it's all because of the greenhouse effect. What is the greenhouse effect? What happens inside greenhouses? Plants seem to grow very well. These scientists are trying to find out why. The air temperature outside is just under 16 Celsius. Inside the greenhouse, the soil temperature is over 16 Celsius. How high will the air temperature be? It's much higher than it is outside. Where does the heat come from? How does it get to us? It's not only greenhouses that heat up inside. What shouldn't you leave inside a car for long on a hot day? Why do cars and greenhouses heat up inside? Scientists need theories to help them explain how things happen. Do you agree with his rainbow theory? Well, our theory is that the sun gives off light rays, which are like equivalent, or the same as heat and like they come in to the greenhouse and like heat up the inside of it and we're just trying to figure out um, if it's all like white, the white colour of it that heats up the greenhouse and the insides of it or just one colour on its own. Different scientists often come up with different theories. Do you think her floor theory is better? Our theory is that if the floors are different colours, then the sun will, like, do whatever the colour the floors are. Because if the floor's black, then the sun's ray will be absorbed by the black, because the black absorbs the sun, and therefore give heat off into the greenhouse. But if the floor's white, the uh, sun will, reflect, will be reflected by the whiteness, and therefore the heat will go away. What do you think makes greenhouses heat up? If some theories are wrong, how can you shoot them down? how good their theories are, scientists have to put them to the test. They're testing several different theories, using pop bottles as model greenhouses and heat lamps instead of the sun. This group is testing the rainbow theory. How can they make fair tests between the different colours? What measurements will be important?
This group is testing the floor theory. They're using first a white floor, then a black floor. What differences would you expect to measure with the two different colours of floor? 30 degrees. So I have to put the light in. How long should we time it for? Uh, three minutes. OK, ready to go. And what will happen to their greenhouse when the lamp is switched off again? Separate them from the source of heat and hot things cool down. Is that what happens to the earth when the sun goes down? This is a model earth. They're leaving it to heat up over lunch. The temperature of the air is 22 Celsius. What happens now the lamps are turned off? The hot ball loses heat to the surroundings. Some of the heat is absorbed by the black paper around the thermometer and the temperature reading goes up by three degrees. So what happens with the real Earth? On the left side it's daytime so the Earth heats up. At night the temperature drops as the Earth loses heat again. The same thing happens on the Moon. But every night on the Moon is much colder than the coldest night ever recorded on Earth. What keeps our nights on Earth so much warmer than the dark side of the Moon? effect isn't new. Scientists have been thinking about it for nearly 200 years. The first one was the Frenchman Jean-Baptiste Fourier. In 1827 he came up with an idea. He thought that the Earth's atmosphere might trap heat just like a natural greenhouse. It keeps the earth warm. Fifty years later, an Irishman, John Tyndall, thought a bit more about Fourier's idea of a natural greenhouse effect. He wondered if it was just some of the gases in the atmosphere that trapped the heat. He wanted to find out which of the gases in the atmosphere might be greenhouse gases. These scientists have come up with their own way of testing Tyndall's theory. They're using three pop bottles to hold different atmospheres. They're going to heat them using real sunshine. Like the Earth, the black cardboard will heat up in the sun.
This bottle contains extra water vapour. One bottle contains ordinary air. The third bottle will contain carbon dioxide. This is dry ice, solid carbon dioxide. Put some into a bottle and plug the neck and you get an atmosphere rich in CO2. After five minutes in the sun, the temperature with ordinary air is 23.7 Celsius. In the bottle containing carbon dioxide, it's 25.4 Celsius. And in the bottle containing lots of water vapour, it's 27.4. So are carbon dioxide and water vapour both greenhouse gases? How do greenhouse gases get into the atmosphere? Some come from burning fuels. They come from the land and the sea. From all living things. What happens to all of these gases? Most of them are taken in again by plants and by the sea, so there doesn't seem to be much change. But it's the gas that isn't reabsorbed that's worrying scientists. Could extra carbon dioxide cause global warming? Do you think adding extra gases to the atmosphere is like fitting a greenhouse with double glazing? Could the extra greenhouse effect cause deserts to turn into fertile land? Or could it be the other way round? It's more than just a scientific problem. Why should politicians be worried about the greenhouse effect? What can they do about it? And what information might help them? When you're at the North Pole, you can get lots of information by drilling into the ice. Ice cores taken from deep down in the ice show what conditions were like on Earth thousands of years ago. Each layer in the ice tells scientists how much carbon dioxide was in the atmosphere and what the temperature was at the time the ice was formed. The ice core record goes back 150,000 years. The amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere has gone up and down. It's high now, nearly as high as it's ever been. What's happened to the temperature? The two patterns look almost the same, but which is the cause and which is the effect? 
does high CO2 cause the temperature to go up, or do CO2 levels rise after the Earth has warmed up? What's happening to the weather now? And what will happen to it in the future? All over the world, scientists are taking weather readings. It's easy enough to find out what's happening now, but predicting even a day ahead is difficult. That's why it's important to keep taking measurements on the ground and in the air, by day and by night. What we need to find out is what's happening to the average global temperature. The best instrument of all is a scientific eye in the sky. This is how the temperature on Earth is now. The colours show that it's hot near the equator and cold at the top and the bottom near the poles. How might the temperature pattern change if we keep on adding to the greenhouse effect? What's happened to the average global temperature over the last hundred years? What will happen over the next 20 years? Will it stay the same as it is now? Then life will go on as it always has. Will the temperature go down? If that happens, you could be sledging in your summer holidays. Or will the temperature go up? This could be the depths of winter. What other problems could be brought on by an increase in global temperatures? Are we really adding to the natural greenhouse effect? What evidence do we need to find out? How much evidence do we need before we take action? And what action should we take? <laughs> 